Hello friends, in our last class we have discussed about dynamics of productivity change. We have already discussed what exactly mean by productivity, how to calculate productivity. Now in today's class basically we are going to focus on what are the different types of productivity. Now when we are discussing regarding this particular term productivity, we are always having this particular quantity ratio in our mind. Because productivity is nothing but it is the output upon input. And therefore, if I am going to denote P as a productivity, P is equal to O by I. This O is nothing but output, I is nothing but input. And by looking towards this particular two terms, there are four to five different ways through which it is possible for me to improve productivity and how this particular term productivity or how we should improve this particular, product, improve this particular productivity that we can discuss in detail in our next slide. But now we are going to focus on what are the different types of productivity. To start with this particular first type of productivity which is called as total productivity or in few books you will find this the term as a total factor productivity. Now as the name itself indicates total productivity, we can define this particular total productivity as it is a quantity ratio of total output divided by total input. That means whatever total output we can generate through that particular plant, for example suppose if we are running with 4 to 5 different products within that particular organization, then what are the total output which we already generate from those particular five for, for that particular five compound or five products that all output we are going to take into consideration as the total output generated from that particular organization. At the same time, we have to concentrate on this particular total input which we already used within that particular organization. That summation of all those particular inputs which gives me the total input and therefore to calculate total productivity or total factor productivity, we merely going to divide this particular total output by total input. This is simple and straightforward formula for total productivity as total output divided by total input. This is the first type of productivity, total productivity. Now the second type of productivity is called as partial productivity. Now what exactly mean by partial productivity? Partial productivity is a ratio of total output divided by that individual input that is important. That means here we are just going to replace that particular denominator by total input to that individual input. And when I am replacing that particular total input by individual input, I am going to get the partial productivity. And therefore, the various examples for partial productivities are labor productivity, the first. Now to calculate labor productivity, I am going to have a formula total output divided by labor input. The second example, materials productivity total output divided by materials input. Third, third, third example, energy productivity, total output divided by energy input. These three terms or these three examples clearly shows us how we should calculate partial productivity within that particular organization. Once I know these two types of productivity, then we will move further regarding the different advantages and disadvantages which we are going to get from this particular total factor productivity or partial productivity. For partial productivity measure, the first advantage which we are going to get as it is easy to understand and calculate. As we are just going to divide that particular total output by the energy input or that particular materials input, it is possible for me to find out that particular energy productivity or materials productivity because these are the partial productivity and that's why we can say it is easy to understand and calculate. The second advantage which we are going to get as a tool to pinpoint improvement. Whether that particular improvement is due to materials, materials, materials or that improvement is due to the labor or the material or the improvement is due to or productive improvement is due to the energy, whatever that partial productivity gives us, the partial productivity measure clearly going to point out that the improvement is only because of this particular factor. The second that is total productivity measure, 
it is easy and more accurate presentation of the total picture of that particular company. The second advantage which we are going to get for this total productivity measure as easily related to total cost. And the third advantage of total productivity measure is considers all quantifiable outputs and inputs. Friends, regarding this particular total factor productivity measure, the first advantage is data from company records is relatively easy to obtain. And the second advantage for this total factor productivity measure is value added approach. This is a value added approach that means definitely we are going to improve value for that particular product for that particular component. Along with advantages we are having certain limitations or disadvantages also. The limitation or disadvantage for partial productivity, partial productivity measure is first it is going to mislead, mislead if we are going to use it alone. That means even though the productivity has been improved we can't say that particular productivity has been improved by this particular materials by this particular energy. Second, no consideration of overall impact. The disadvantages for total productivity measure is it is difficult to obtain the data. That means for obtaining total productivity it is required for us to get the data regarding the total output as well as the total input. And therefore, it is really going to become a difficult for us to obtain that particular data. The second limitation is requirement of special data collection system. To collect the data for each output, each input, okay, we require a special collection system to collect that individual data for that particular product. The disadvantage for total factor productivity is no consideration for materials and energy input in total factor productivity. The second limitation is difficult to relate value added approach to production efficiency. Friends, these are few advantages and disadvantages which we can observe from this particular different types of productivities. Now, based on this particular knowledge, I am having one question for you. What are the different types of productivity? Just think over it. 